In our last episode, we woke up bright and early at Sobel Falls Provincial Park. We packed up all our gear and took the one hour drive out to Tobamori. Our boats for the day were not canceled. We made one pit stop at the Parks Canada office to pick up our camping pass and then headed over to Blue Heron Cruises to board our ship. We were finally on our way to Flower Pot Island and there was no turning back. We set up camp, did a little bit of relaxing, and then headed out to explore and find some hidden gems. We ended off the evening watching the last boat leave, catching sunset, and then doing some amazing stargazing. And that brings us to the next morning. Good morning. It is Friday, today's Friday. We just woke up after our night's sleep here on Flower Pot Island. It's a little bit chilly this morning, but look at our view. And there's Andy. Oh, the skies are really clear today. Last night when we went to bed, we thought we weren't going to be able to get our starry night shots that we've been pining for since we did the bike trip, but check them out because we got some. Andy's making us some coffee this morning before we head out to do some vlogging of the island before all the tourists get here. We have the island to ourselves. We decided to start off our day today with a walk just because it is so peaceful out here with no tourists or nobody visiting right now and the water is so calm, the sun has risen. Um, we usually walk through the forest trail to get to the flower pots, but today we decided to walk along the boardwalk and just take in the sounds of nature. Let's go. boardwalk doesn't extend too far down um, like to walk along you can't walk all the way to the flower pots following it it does march back into the forest but you can see here we're not too far from the first flower pot just gotta go that way so as you're walking this path You'll notice there's a whole bunch of clearings that lead back out to the water. As long as there's no barriers put up, you're actually free to go down there and explore. Um, usually when we come, we don't even walk the path, like this path here between the flower pots. We usually go down to the first flower pot and then we'll walk along the shore to the second one. Now, I do advise that is only good if you're you know, if you have good agility and you're okay with walking on rocky surfaces and potentially getting a little bit wet. We already made it to the first flower pot. So, it is a little steep to get down here. You have to be really careful. Ooh, the sun's bright. Really careful when you're trying to walk down, but I promise the view is totally worth it.
Okay, only about a five minute walk away from the first flower pot, you'll come across the large flower pot. This trail's a little bit easier to get down. And you can already get a sneak peek of the large flower pot from here. Alright, at the end of um, the first half of the loop tra trail, or the, sorry, the flower pot trail, uh, you come to the flower pot island light station. Now if you go right, you're going to see right now there's a blockade there. That usually takes you to the light station. Uh, because of COVID though, it's closed. But you can still go to your left, there's a path there, and you get to go see the lightkeeper's house and there's a museum. Again, the museum is not open um, because of COVID, but it's really cute and picturesque. You can go, there's like picnic tables, there's some Muskoka chairs, and you can go sit by the water and just kind of enjoy the view. So these are the buildings that we're going to actually go see in real life. So that building right there is the museum, but we won't be able to go in today. Now the flower pot trail is part of the loop trail. So if you're looking to do a longer hike, you can continue on past these lighthouses. You see there's a sign there and that'll take you on the loop trail, which is just a giant circle all around the island. There's also a funny bathroom here. It's a loo with a view. <laughs> Look at that. Hilarious. Well, I think we're going to make a pit stop here at these Muskoka chairs. We brought our coffees with us and it's just so nice and calm. I think I'm going to enjoy my coffee here by the water. Oh man. So Lake Huron water is so clear. Um, but it's very cold like even in the summer it's really cold but like this the so the sound of the water and like the fact that i'm kind of hot from walking right now it's really inviting i really wish that i could go in and go swimming but i would likely get hypothermia when i came out because it's cold anyway andy's gonna join me shortly and maybe we'll go and try and find those hidden gems that we couldn't find yesterday stay tuned So we decided not to go find the hidden gems because I actually forgot to put my ankle brace on and Andy's shoes aren't the best for um, walking off the beaten path either. Yeah, I decided to wear my vessies because I knew I would be going near the water to get water and all that. I didn't want to get my feet wet, but they are great for keeping your feet dry. Terrible for stability. Instead, we are gonna save those hidden gems for the next time we come back to the island because, I mean, it's inevitable, inevitable that we will be back here. Uh, so we've decided for the last few hours, well, it's bright. For the last few hours that we have here on the island, we're gonna kind of just take it easy and really enjoy just walking the path without anybody else here. Literally, we're the only people that have been on this path all morning. On the island. Craziness. Yeah, so. We're just going to kind of enjoy nature, enjoy relaxing, and then in a couple hours we've got to pack up our tent and everything because our boat is going to be here to pick us up. The sun is out, it was raining yesterday, so logic dictates that we are going home today. We are going home today. Oh, 2020. 
Okay, our first time backcountry camping. Final thoughts. Loved it. Uh, Tia needs to bring more clothes. Yeah, never uh, clothes. Yeah. Um, I honestly wish we could have had a fire, but I guess uh, that that's just the way it is in Ontario. Um, but other backcountry sites that you hike into that aren't on an island do allow fire. Really? Yeah. So like the backcountry sites in Bruce Peninsula National Park, they, they allow a fire pit. Come on. Okay. So we're thinking that, yeah, we'll come back here and camp um, for more than one night. Hopefully the boats don't get canceled next time we decide to do it. However, I think we're ready to maybe try a hike in sight. Not one too, too far. Andy probably has to upgrade his bag to something a little bit bigger, but yeah, I think um, we might be ready. We, I can't, I can't really strap anything to the outside of my bag, which is a problem. And uh, I guess bringing the Takea may have been a mistake this time around. I didn't really uh, eat, uh, take advantage of it at all, and uh, it took up a considerable bit of space in my pack. So we also brought some extra luxury items because we were able to bring an extra bag onto the boat. So like the extra blanket, three books that we did we barely read. Um, what else? Between us, we read five pages. We brought towels as if we were gonna go swimming. I don't know why we thought we would go swimming. A bathing suit. Mm -hmm. Well, no, I think the bathing suit would, uh, was fine because it's kind of like shorts, at least for me. For you, mine's a full bathing suit. Yeah, well, it doesn't take that uh, take up that much space. But yeah, like there is definitely some refinement in our uh, in our gear that we need to do. But 33 liters is really not quite enough so yeah uh, probably get something a little bit bigger like a 40 liter maybe which is a shame because I really like my uh, my pack but but I think they sell that same pack in a 40 liter or a bigger version they do but I guess my uh, what I'm trying to say is I really like that specific size like it's a good size on me um, if anybody has suggestions, we really like Osprey, but if you have suggestions, even if it's not Osprey, put them in the comments. We'd love to check out other gear, see what works for us. We're all about the outdoor gear right now, so let us know. To, yeah, um, in terms of the campground, it's really nice. It really, uh, it really is nice. Uh, the, the platform keeps you nice and warm. You, oh, one takeaway with the tent. Condensation happens a lot. There's a lot of condensation. Your body temperature will be sapped pretty readily. So definitely uh, recommend number one, bringing uh, long sleeve sleeping clothes. And number two, a um, have a tent that is two layered so that uh, the condensation has a way to escape rather than drip back down onto you. That has happened to both of us on this trip. So. If you're curious what that means, we actually did a review of a $30 Ozark Trail tent versus a $300 Marmot tent. The Marmot tent is double layered. Um, so check out that video up here, here, here. I think I got it right this I time. Think it's this one. Is it this I one? I think it's this side. Okay. Check it out up here <laughs> if you're curious to see what their difference really is and if the price range really makes sense. Um, we, we did after last night we did wish we brought our marmot instead of that ozark trail yeah any other final thoughts oh the stream lights that we brought were completely okay. useless outside no it was nice <laughs> it had ambiance all right fine a little bit but what it really gave us was a nice soft light on the inside of the tent so we might actually make that a normal camping uh, thing yeah that was really nice uh, to be able to light the tent up Pretty good. Yep. We enjoyed it. All right, we have an hour before our boat out of here arrives. We're just chilling in the sun, looking at the views for one last time before we leave. Thank you.